Hey YouTubers, so just wanted to tell you about my experience last week. Uh, this hot water heater was getting old and I knew that it was gonna fail at any point. A few years ago I had to replace the elements in there, they were completely gone. And so I thought, well, rather than have it bust, I would go ahead and just replace it and uh, not have to worry about it because I knew the bottom of it was full of sediment when I drained it a few years ago and replaced those elements in there. And uh, so when I replaced those elements, I, I decided to go ahead and wrap this thing in one of those um, Frost King uh, like three inch insulated blankets. And it's basically just, uh, you know, uh, insulation with a like a, a, a plastic backing on it. And I noticed an improvement in my electric bill. And I noticed that whenever I check this thing with a uh, infrared thermometer that you know I wasn't losing uh, a lot of heat and so whenever I went to replace this unit with the new um, ream unit I was looking at the uh, you know the efficiency of it and this one here had a uh, uniform energy factor of 0 0.92 and the new ream unit that I'm in going to be replacing this one with had a um, energy factor unit of uh, 0 0.93 so the new unit's just a hair more efficient than this 10 year old uh, whirlpool and it said in the the manual of the ream not to uh, that you didn't need to install a hot water heater blanket that it was already efficient enough and so I wanted to check that. I wanted to follow up and see if that was correct because I know I had been using uh, a hot water heater with blankets in the for the last 10 years and they've always worked and I just didn't understand why it said that in the manual that you didn't really need one. And so I well, did some testing. All right, so this is the unit that I got from Home Depot. Now this is the Ream unit. You can see right there, it's the 40 gallon uh, medium and it's got the six year warranty, whatever on the tank. And let's see, we'll go down here and I'll show you where it says uniform energy factor 0 0.93, where I said the old Whirlpool unit outside is a 0 0.92. I told you this one was a little bit more efficient. And like I said, it said in the manual that you didn't really need a hot water heater blanket. It said, you know, it didn't warn you from putting one on there. You know, I, I decided to test it out for myself and see uh, if this unit really did need a hot water heater blanket or not. So when I installed it, the first thing that I did was uh, go around it and test it from top to bottom with a infrared uh, thermometer and I was getting uh, differences of 10 degrees from the top to the bottom and you know heat rises so you know it's going to always be hotter at the top and uh, so I decided well let's go ahead and put a blanket on there because they say that if you can touch the outside of the tank I could feel that the tank was warm so I decided to go ahead and put a uh, a blanket on there and there I'll go ahead and tell you there's a ton of uh, hot water heater insulating blankets on the internet I mean there is a ton and there's a lot on there that I would not trust to insulate very well so I just wanted to show you this is the kind of insulation wrap that I use it's made by Frost King and you can see it's like $31 and what this is is just some you know insulation it's vinyl faced uh, fiberglass and so uh, you just wrap your hot water heater with this stuff and you can see right here here's a picture of it and it really does work now i did find one thing very interesting if you go to the frost king website they've got a product here it's uh, called a water heater base what this is is basically just a, a two inch piece of foam insulation and it goes up underneath your hot water heater and they say that you can save like four to nine percent on your electric bill with uh, these uh, foam bases. Now I went to Home Depot and Lowe's and and uh, you know I was gonna order one off of Amazon but it was gonna take too freaking long to get to me so I was just like I ah, can't wait that long. So uh, I went to Home Depot and I've got just some of that uh, shiny Mylar uh, foam insula or not foam it's a uh, it's like a Mylar insulation with uh, some like air pockets trapped in between it and I thought, well, I'll stick a couple layers of that on the bottom of the hot water heater because I didn't want to wait for this. But, you know, if you're replacing yours and you you know you're going to replace it here soon or whatever and you don't uh, and you have the time to go ahead and order this, 
by all means, I would consider doing this. Now, they do have some project panels. Uh, it's by Formular Project Panels at Home Depot. But I wasn't sure that they would support the weight. And I didn't know if this was a specialized foam. I did call um, Owens Corning, I believe is who, who makes the Formula formula R panels and they couldn't tell me they were stupid and <laughs> they didn't know if it would support the weight and so I just you know decided to wait I didn't want to put it on something like those formula R boards and and it not be able to support the weight and crack and break and and uh you know end up rupturing uh, the, the supply lines coming in to the hot water heater if it was to sink or something. So I decided to just uh, put that Mylar insulation up underneath the hot water heater. But I go ahead and tell you, I would definitely go ahead and get a product like this. It really does work. Like I said, this is the Frost King one. And it it is kind of messy because it has that fiberglass insulation and it sucks when you get it on your skin so wear a long sleeve shirt but that's what it looks like and you see it's got a good r value of 6.7 that one said it was two inches thick i must have got an older version that i i could have swore it said it was three inches so shop around there's different types out there i'm gonna go in here and show you what mine looks like all right, so we're in my, my laundry room now. I'm sorry, I've got all my prepping stuff in here. I've got all my prep buckets and all that. Yep. And uh, so I just wanted to show you. I took, I found some of uh, this. Uh... So now I'm in my laundry room. And this is my prepping room. That's where I keep all my preps and things like that. And just in case of emergency. But you can see that this is my hot water heater. Uh, the old unit didn't have a thermal expansion tank. I would suggest you get one. And if you notice, this is my hot water side. This side over here is my cold water side. And you can see that I have them wrapped in the uh, insulation, the uh, foam or rubber. I think one of them's got some both on there. So either way, the, the, the pipes are wrapped with the black uh, insulation and then I was at my local Walmart and they had this uh, uh, wrap here this thermal wrap it's kind of like a, a aluminum faced uh, wrap uh, and it was like three bucks it was on clearance it was normally like seven dollars and it had a good R value and so I didn't just wrap it up without testing it to see if it worked uh, I actually tested the whole unit and I will say that you know, the way that I did it, it really saved, I can tell you from testing, that it really saved because uh, this pipe coming up out of the top of the hot water heater was getting really hot. And, you know, there was a, a big difference with uh, temperature change. And I was testing it before with this, and I was getting like a 10 degree uh, difference from top to bottom on the, the hot water heater. And I was getting uh, a higher reading up through here where it first come out, but right there in that elbow where it bends, it was trapping some heat right there in that bend. So I decided to double wrap it and I thought, eh, it might look like crap, but if it works, it works. I used this Frost King insulation for the hot water heater and you can see that it was on that old unit. So that's why it's a little ripped and rough looking. Now I did use this Gorilla Tape to secure everything and make it fit nice and tight. And right here on the very top, I use one of those thick um, uh, zip ties to hold it in place. Cause over time it will droop and it will cause the, the tape to come loose. So I thought, well, I'll put one of these on there and I know it's not good to you know uh, bunch up uh, insulation, but oh well, it ain't gonna hurt it right in that little spot. It'll be all right. So anyways, like I said, I put the, the blanket on here first. And then I, I cut it out so you could get to the um, the heating elements if I ever needed to replace that or the thermostat uh, in there. And there's another one down below. You can see I cut out a little a door. And you can see right here on the top, I went ahead and put a couple layers of this uh, Mylar looking insulation on top. There's two layers of this. And then I had some pieces of that tape left over from this right here and so I secured all the little slits and and filled those in and then on the very bottom of the unit you can't see it but on the very bottom 
I've got it raised up on some solid cinder blocks and then I have a layer or maybe two layers of this right here up underneath it. And here I know you're gonna say, well, you don't need no insulation on the bottom. Well, they said uh, online that you could save four to nine percent. So I'm gonna save as much as I can and I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So I went ahead and did it and and uh, been happy with it so far. And then if you're wondering what is this ugly mess right in here, let me tell you what happened. There is a uh, discharge valve there in the middle. So if it gets too hot or whatever, it, it can blow off. It's a blow off valve. And so I was doing some testing uh, with the, uh, the hot water heater with the uh, infrared thermometer. And like I said, I was getting some readings of 10 degree difference from top to bottom on this thing. And so... Um, when I was testing it, I noticed that right around that blow off valve, it was very, very hot. You know, uh, it was reading, you know, 10 degrees higher right at that, that valve there at the middle of the hot water tank. And I thought, well, I don't want to, you know, insulate around the top of it where it can't work, but I can insulate around it. And so that's what I did. I did not put any insulation right around the, the valve where it can't open and close, but I did insulate around the bottom of it. You know, it's round and it sticks up, you know, probably about this high. And so that's what this is. I've got it insulated with just some really heavy foam that I received, you know, packing stuff in the mail. I just stuck foam in there to see if I could make a difference. And, and uh, I did. Believe it or not, like I said, there was a 10 degree difference from top to bottom on this unit. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you. Now there's only about a three degree difference. So you can see right there, it's reading probably about six inches from the bottom. 68, 67 at the very, very bottom. Let's check it. About middle ways. There's 70. 71. 70 69 so 69 right there almost the very top of the unit 70 about middle ways reading 71 then at the very base it's at 67.5 so you can still see that there's a little bit of rise in the temperature from bottom to the top but there's no 10 degree difference so let's check it up here at this pipe Right there at the pipe, it's reading 74.5. So it is still a little bit hotter right there. Let's check it right there in the bend. Yeah, it's at 70. So you can see right where it comes out of the hot water heater, it's at 73, 74 degrees. So I was correct. It is. It does get a little hotter coming out right there, and that's why I insulated around the hot water side with this tape, and that's why I went ahead and put that insulation in there around that, that valve and... Uh, it really did make a difference, guys. And if you're saying, oh, well, that ain't going to save you money, I promise you it does. Uh, you're going to have your hot water heater for probably 10, 15 years. And over the course of that time, you know, it's going to save you quite a bit. And I promise you'll be able to see it on your electric bill. Now, this ain't beautiful by no means. It don't look nearly as pretty as the, the outside of that brand new uh, ream unit that I put in here. But... If it saves me more money and it's more efficient, then I'm gonna run with it. I don't care what it looks like. It's just a hot water heater. Ain't nobody entering this thing in a car show or nothing. <laughs> so, uh, one thing I will mention is, you know, don't, when you cut this slots out for the uh, access panels to get in there to replace all your uh, components, make sure you don't, um, make that so nice and tight where you know it's uh, going to get too hot and overheat your wiring in there and cause a problem but it said on the internet that if you're going to run a, a heated blanket like this set the uh the uh, thermostat on your hot water heater down to like 120 or 125 so that way you know it don't get too hot and melt the wiring in in where the wires go back here for the uh, heating elements and so that's what I did. And then also you got some wiring right in here. And so that's why I did was lower the 
the temperature down on the hot water heater and it's set like i said to i believe 120 or 125 from the factory so i didn't have to adjust anything and i don't have to worry about it getting too hot hope this video helped you out sorry it was so long but i just wanted to show it to you and maybe it'll help somebody out save you some money if you like the video please like it and uh, hit me the subscribe button i'd really appreciate it and until next time guys thanks for watching